back in the day when I was just a boy we used to fish this here fly and it killed the fish Curtis caught so many fish one time on this that he had nothing but the bead left and still was catching fish check it out <laughs> Okay, this is a modification of a fly that uh, Curtis and I have been fishing for probably about 20 years. It's a super basic fly. Yes, it is just a woolly bugger, but it has a, a few special ingredients. But anyway, on this one I'm tying it up with a, a size 10 and a 3.5 mil bead. You can also do it with a size 12 and a 3 mil bead. You can do it with offset beads um, like that one. Um, but a uh, lot of different ways that you can put this together. But the key to this fly, I think, is the chenille and the, the color of bead on the head, the chartreuse. Anyway, let's jump in. I'm going to just put a bunch of thread behind the bead to lock it in place. I really like these fire hole beads because the slots are very consistent. And it doesn't take a lot of work to get them to sit where you want them to sit. Um, once you're here, I'm going to use some of the, the bugger boo. This is a very flowy marabou. You don't want to tie it in by the tip. You want to pull it off the sides of the, the marabou and use that uh, for the fly. So I'll get a healthy clump about that much and then just kind of pinch it all together and that will be my, my tail for the fly. Now because this marabou isn't super long, I won't be able to tie it in right behind the bead like I usually do. Uh, so in order to reduce bulk back here, there's a little hack that I learned from Davy McPhail. Um, what I did is I, I trimmed off the nastiness off of that marabou. Then I'm just going to take my thumbnail and come in here and pull the marabou off of the stems. And you end up with this marabou fuzz and then a bunch of stems that are exposed. So when I tie those in, it hardly creates any bulk at all. And the marabou is nice and, and rooted, nice and stable. And now you've got a nice marabou tail without any bulky buildup. I will do the reverse palmer technique on this. So I'll tie in some wire to counter wrap the hackle. Um, you don't have to do the reverse palmer, but it will be a little bit more durable. Moisten my fingers a little bit and get the tail to behave. Now the next thing is this speckled speckled chenille and lime olive. Uh, that's a super killer chenille we've been using for a long long time and I'm just going to pluck off some of the chenille fibers, expose the core and that's what I'll use to to tie this down. All right, so ready to wrap the chenille and get going. And this wrapping chenille is definitely something that I use the rotary technique for. And instead of using a bobbin cradle, I just grab my pinky and I hold the thread out of the way this way. So if I do that five or six turns and I'm up at the head of the fly. Trim that off and now we're gonna tie in some hackle. Um, any hackle will work. Bugger hackle. I like using like dry fly quality um, saddle hackle just because I want the, the fibers to, to not be super long. So I'm going to strip off enough to have a generous stem of hackle here. Tie it in with a few wraps and then put a few wraps in front of that stem to really lock it down. And then I'll trim it off. Okay, from here... Just one turn right around the head, and then I'm going to angle backward as I go back. And probably only like four total turns of hackle. And then I'm just going to wiggle the wire or whatever you're using to, to reverse palmer this. Could be a, a section of tippet, it could be copper wire, it could be whatever you want. Get that all tied in, and then uh, take the wire and crease it and then helicopter that sucker off. The the hackle as well, I should be able just to pull it against the the wire wrap and break it off. So it cuts it, it trims down really nice. 
and that the hackle on this should be really nice and sparse and buggy it's not supposed to be exact it's supposed to look like a an injured damselfly not really but buggier the better so whip that off and then tack it with a tiny little bit of head cement and one time when we were fishing this fly Curtis caught so many fish on it that everything had you just gotten ripped off the the hook except for the bead that's how important that bead is um, if you have a bunch of dumb rainbow trout in your lake try this fly you won't be disappointed